Hi everyone, welcome back to Property Couple. My name's Leah and today I thought I'd show you some of the amazing listed buildings in Chichester where I live. And I wanted to answer a few of your questions about listed buildings in general, the rules, the regulations, what qualifies something as a listed building. Because it's something I'm really interested in and also from a property perspective, there's so many things that you have to know about buying a listed building, what you can do to a listed building, what you can't, the different grades. So I'm gonna take you around Chichester with me. I've got my sunglasses and my hat on because it's super hot today. And I'm gonna show you some listed buildings and chat to you about them. Let's go. So what does it mean if a house is listed? A building is listed when it is of special architectural or historic interest in a national context. So listed buildings have extra legal protection within the planning system. Listed houses come in many styles and sizes and range from terraced houses to simple country cottages and stately homes. Just to give you an idea of house price around here, I actually had a look at one of these sort of um, midtown terraces, not too far from the centre, not done up inside. Uh, an elderly person had lived there. They didn't have gas or anything, only electric supplying the property. And it was 285 so 285,000 but those same houses on the same road done up to a good standard were going for about 350 400,000 so a lot cheaper than London but still quite pricey. Currently there are three categories of listed building based on their significance so starting from the bottom you have grade two listed buildings so grade two are buildings of special interest and the vast majority, around 92% of all listed buildings fall into this category. Most of the properties I'm gonna be showing you today are grade two listed. The next one up from that is grade two star buildings and they are particularly important buildings of more than special interest and just 5.5% of listed buildings fall under the grade two star category. So whilst I was doing a bit of research for a grade two star building, I found a couple on South Street, including this shop, which is Ebony Jewelers. The kind people inside let me have a look in. It's actually so like, oh my gosh. Thanks for letting me have a look around. Whoa, oh, like no well. way. Like a shop front. That's oh actually the actual shop front. Oh my gosh, that's the yeah. original. This is so cool. Don't you think people were always shorter as well back then? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, well, I, would have, there, I actually, enough. I would have been the perfect height for that time. But, <laughs> <laughs> so from doing a little bit of digging, it looks as if all of them along the street from 19 to 23 are actually grade two star listed. Oh, and 17 and 18. When I spoke to the shop owner, he said that they were owned by the church. And if I click on the list entry, then it's quite obvious that these buildings were in fact the Vicar's Hall and Crypt at Cannon Gate. So that's probably why these are of special interest and gives them the star. But it was quite cool to go inside and have a look and see the old shop entrance. It was just really cool inside and you could definitely tell it was somewhere of special interest. What I didn't realize at the time was that the other buildings next door to it were also listed. So that whole row there, are actually all part of the Vickers Hall and Crypt. So that's quite exciting. I will definitely be paying more attention to that next time I walk down South Street. That was so nice of them to let me in and have a look around. I wasn't expecting they would, they would do that, but it was really, really sweet. I'm gonna go now to uh, down near Bishop's Palace Garden. There's tons of listed buildings through here. And some of them are because of like uh, the church, and I think Chichester is like deeply rooted in religion. When I moved to Chichester, I so badly wanted to live in one of these because they're just so amazing. And I even, <laughs> I even took some pictures from my personal Instagram outside these places and I was terrified that someone was gonna find me. Um, someone was gonna walk out of their house and be like, stop taking pictures in my house. They must get it all the time. But just look how the windows are all preserved. I doubt, I doubt they're allowed to change any of them because this is all like historic glazing. I doubt they'd be able to get permission to change these into, you know, modern day double or triple glazing. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. So this is grade two star listed. On Historic England's website, I was reading about traditional windows in listed buildings, and it says here that they would always prefer people to repair rather than replace. Traditional windows can almost always be repaired. Keeping the original windows makes an important contribution to the attractiveness and special interest of your home. So the original is better than a copy, however faithfully made. Obviously, windows are prone to decay, wear and damage. Replacing them can be expensive and it can reduce the special interest of the building. It also says that historic glass with its slightly rippled, uneven nature adds character to traditional windows and is now very rare. So if you're looking for some historic glass, uh, good luck finding it, guys. Then you have grade one buildings, and these are of exceptional interest, and only 2.5% of listed buildings fall into grade one. So think Buckingham Palace, think big scale, places of interest, those are likely to be grade one. So when I entered through Bishop's Palace Garden, you've got this lovely view of the walls in Chichester, and I've mentioned it in other videos before on my Leah channel, but just to mention it again, 2,000 years ago, the Romans founded the market town Novio Magnus Reginorum, and today we call it Chichester. I really hope I pronounced it correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry. After 1,800 years, the walls survive as one of the most intact circuits of Roman defences in the south of England. So it's pretty impressive, really. If you follow the trail, you'll see Chichester from an entirely different perspective, and it really is quite beautiful. I just had a bit of a strange moment because you rarely hear the name Leah. It's not that popular a name. And then there's some parents down there um, just like playing with their kids. And they're like, Leah, Leah. And I was like, whoa, it's a bit jarring. Um, so they never hear that. Anyway, I'm just by the walls and these cannot be listed. They are ungradable because they're never going to be going anywhere. I mean, never say never, but in the world we live in right now, no one's allowed to do anything to these historic points of interest. According to Historic England, there's about 500,000 listed buildings in England, but it's really hard to be precise because one listing, for example, could cover a whole row of terraced houses. So it's no surprise that the older a building is, the more likely it is to be listed. So all buildings built before 1700, which survive in anything like their original condition, are listed as are most of those built between 1700 and 1840. So the more modern a building is, the more remarkable it will need to be if it's going to be listed. Buildings that date from 1945 onwards need to be particularly carefully selected, and usually a building has got to be over 30 years old for it to be eligible for listing. So what does it mean if I buy a house that is listed, or if I'm living in a listed house? Listing is simply a mark of special interest in a national context and most owners are rightly proud of their special building. The building that you live in will be included on the National Heritage List for England and it means that this building is making a contribution to the specialness of England's diverse historic environment. Also, it can increase the value of a property. When you look up an entry on the list database, you can be surprised about the information you can find. For example, in Chichester, we have the Corn Exchange, which is now known as Next. It used to be the Granada Cinema, and it is a grade two star listed building. It was built in 1833, and it's now home to Next and also Boston Tea Party, who leased the building. And you might not be able to see the entrance of Boston Tea Party, but you can enter there just down the turning of Baffin's Lane. So in 1948, this used to be a cinema, but before that, it was the Corn Exchange, and it was financed by 70 local corn merchants who each contributed between 25 and 250 pounds. So to think that corn, wheat and oats and barley were commonly traded here at the Corn Exchange, it's just crazy to now know that I can walk into that store and just have a little mooch around next and buy some clothes and homeware. It's very strange and I am constantly fascinated by the evolution of our high street. The architecture of the building is very Greek revivalist. Uh, we've got the Doric columns out front, uh, each of which weigh three tons and are made out of cast iron. So that's pretty impressive. And they're just such a huge statement in the middle of Chichester. So I absolutely love it. 
So behind me over there is Hamilton House. Excuse the seagulls that are so loud. I actually found out recently it's been mating season. So I think these are all the new baby seagulls that are just super excited. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I just walked past Hamilton House and there's somebody painting outside, doing a bit of upkeep. And I had a little sneak inside. I just poked my camera in and zoomed in. And this is what I saw. So I will go online and try and find out more information about Hamilton House because I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen a human walk inside that building. I, I just did a little Google and I think the last sale of the property was in 1995. So there must be some history there. I'm gonna go do a bit of digging. I ended up doing a little bit more digging on Hamilton House since I was able to have a small peek inside and all I found was this page here on Historic England and it just sort of says, uh, you know, two stories here, two window bays, uh, sort of a bit of this, a bit of that. I wasn't actually able to find out why this was a place of particular interest. But, you know, I suppose if you're someone who's used to reading this kind of stuff, it might make more sense to you. I did find out that it was grade two and not grade two star. So there you go. It's uh, number five and six, St. John Street. Quite helpful here that it had a little picture of it too, just to confirm that it was what I was looking for. I also noticed whilst I was walking around town that some of the nicest buildings are actually the banks. They seem to own some of the most beautiful listed buildings. Not all of them, but definitely some of them. And I did wonder why, and I guess it's probably just because banks have had money since forever and they've had access to the most beautiful buildings. I wanted to include some footage of all the empty shops on the high street not to do with listed buildings, but just to do with the fact that business rates are so high these days that a lot of local businesses are actually priced out and cannot afford to keep up with the rent in the area on top of their business rates. So sometimes I do wonder about the evolution of the high street, what the high street's gonna look like in 10 years from now with the prices being so high to have a shop here. As you can see, lots of these buildings are listed and they have residential above and then commercial below. So it's quite nice because the area remains quite beautiful to look up at these buildings and the history is not lost with the commercial side on the ground floor. Yay, we found a blue plaque. Let's go and see. Okay, so the founder of the Chichester Festival Theatre lived here. So that's quite a big deal. If you see a property with a blue plaque, it's usually grade two listed with a star next to it. So the majority of these properties that are grade two listed are just grade two, not grade two star. So that's what I've been on the hunt for today in this video. Okay, so we've got the cathedral over here and then opposite the cathedral, we have a pub. So it's called the Duke and Rye, the Duke rather, not the Duke throwback to being told at drama school how to pronounce duke gosh that ruined me so opposite the cathedral we've got the duke and rye which is a pub unfortunately they're closed at the moment because i imagine of covid but i might have some footage on my phone from ages ago where i peeked my head inside to have a look what it looked like and it's insane so so nice this is nothing to do with listed buildings at the minute but something i want to mention as one of my followers highlighted it as unusual is that in the UK we have our estate agents showcasing properties in the window so you can look through the window of an estate agent or realtor and you can see how much prices house prices are going for so I've walked past a load of estate agents in this video I'll show you one right now and just give you an idea of some of the properties that are on the market. As you can see here we've got a detached property in the centre of Chichester around 450 to 475 and a one bed flat with one bathroom going for about 270. Both are in listed buildings, so that's just to give you an idea. I was just about to walk and show you the last blue plaque property that I had found and then I just stumbled across another one. So this one is Jane Stokely, loving, beautiful and fun. Okay, do you know what? I don't know if that is a real plaque. Normally the blue plaques say like the person of interest or what they've done in their life and that's why because that one doesn't actually say who they were I think that's why I got confused by it but this person could be someone of interest I, I just don't know. 
So one last plaque that I found was not actually blue, but it is indeed a plaque. And it says here, John Keats began to write The Eve of St. Agnes in 1819. So that makes this building a grade two star listed building, which is quite nice. I didn't even know it existed until I looked up. So always look up. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching that video guys i hope you enjoyed it i really enjoyed going around even though it was super hot today and showing you some of the listed buildings in my area there's so many in the uk like there's just an abundance of listed buildings some of higher grade than others but i do feel very lucky to live in an area of such uh, beauty so do let me know in the comments your thoughts your feedback and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video don't forget to subscribe to property couple follow us on instagram at Property Couple UK, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my boyfriend in the next video. He's just so busy. He currently works in that room over there, which I call the dungeon, and he's really super busy with his job. Hopefully, you'll see him again soon. Lots of love. Bye.